We are working through some examples by using the quotient rule. And so let's go ahead and look at our next example. So here I have g of x is equal to 4x plus 7 times x minus 3 all over x minus 2. Clearly we see a fraction or a quotient, so that means that we actually have to do the quotient rule. Okay, when we see this g of x here, don't get confused that that's the same as this g of x over there. These mean two different things. This is the name of this function, and this g of x represents anything in the denominator. So if I were to color code these, this g of x just represents whatever I have in the denominator. So don't get the duplicate g's mixed up. Now, the way we have it here is not only would I have to do a quotient rule, because clearly we see a quotient, but notice that I also have a multiplication up here. So in fact, we would also have to be doing a product rule at the exact same time. So which one comes first? What about the order of this? Where do we even start? So on and so forth. Okay, now let's go ahead and write out our quotient rule, and then you can see where our product rule would fit in. So we have g prime of x equals the original of the bottom, x minus 2, times the derivative of the top. Now my top is 4x plus 7 times x minus 3. So when I take the derivative of the top, and since there's a product in there, that's where I would have to apply my product rule. Continuing on with my quotient rule, minus the original of the top, which would be 4x plus 7, times x minus 3, times the derivative of the bottom. So x minus 2, and I'm going to put a prime on it to represent that we need to take the derivative of it. And that is all over my original of the bottom, x minus 2 squared. Okay, so if I were to take the derivative of it as its given exact format, this is the process that I would have to use. And notice in this process where I did my quotient rule, but in my quotient rule, I would also have to do a product rule as well. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem like very much fun to me. So instead of using both of these elaborate rules in the same problem, I'm going to ask myself, is there a different way that we could go about this? And there's a clear answer to that, and that's yes. Instead of keeping my multiplication as is in the numerator, let me simplify my numerator so I don't have that multiplication involved. So I'm just going to FOIL this out. 4x times x gives me 4x squared. Outside gives me a negative 12x. Inside gives me a positive 7x. So together, that gives me a negative 5x. And last gives me a negative 21. That is still all over my denominator. If I wrote my original problem like this, I no longer see a product. Hence, I can take out the product rule out of this derivative. So you're going to start to see that these problems are not only can you apply the rules that you learned, but can you figure out the easiest way to take the derivative of it? And so when we were you in the product rule section, I forced you to use the product rule. But now that we are beyond that section, I want you to start asking yourself, is there an easier way? Don't always think that you have to take the derivative of these in the format that they give them to you in. Ask yourself, what's the easiest way to take this derivative and then go from there? So instead of me using this, I'm going to look at this right here and only use my quotient rule rather than my quotient and product rule at the exact same time. So let me try again. So now, the original of the bottom, x minus 2, times the derivative of the top, and I'm not even going to write it out, I'm just going to do it. That gives me 8x minus 5, minus the original of the top, 4x squared minus 5x minus 21. 
times the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1, all over my bottom squared. And now you can see that this is going to be a much easier process to use. Um, I've set it up for you. I've taken the derivative for you. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can get this in the most simplified format on your own. Okay, so in my first, I need to FOIL 8x squared outside negative 5x inside negative 16x. That gives me a negative 21x last plus 10. Here, I need to distribute my 1 and my negative, so I can think about as distributing it as negative 1. Or really, I'm just going to be subtracting all of my signs. So it gives me a negative 4x squared, a plus 5x, and a plus 21, since I distributed the negative. And we know the bottom we like to keep in that format. Combining my terms, that gives me 4x squared, minus a 16x plus 31 all over my denominator squared. And if we want, we can see if the numerator factors, which I don't believe it does. So we have our final answer of g prime of x is equal to this guy here. So my purpose of this example is to tell you that don't automatically use the format that the problem comes in. Ask yourself, is there an easier way first, and then move on from there. And that becomes more of a theme rather than just applying the rules or memorizing the rules as we know them.